It's good to be with you. Welcome to Class Outside. Today, we're going to learn how to back up our TrueNAS server with a tool called Restic. For this, we'll need a TrueNAS core server set up, an external hard drive that can be completely erased, and the free tool, Restic. First, let's log into our TrueNAS server and go to jails. A jail is like a virtual machine or another operating system running within our computer. We will use a jail to install Restic and manage backing up our data to a hard drive. Let's add a jail. I will name mine Backup and choose the 13.4 release of FreeBSD as the operating system. I will check DHCP. The jail gets its own IP address and this will automatically configure it. If you run into an error during this process, there are two videos linked in the description which may help you troubleshoot. And let's link the pool we want to back up to the jail. Click the little arrow and select mount points. Let's add a new mount point. From source, we'll choose the pool that we want to access data from. For destination, we can choose where within the jail we want to mount the pool. This is sort of like a shortcut on Windows. I'll add a subfolder to the address that relates to our source. I'll also select read only. Then the jail cannot edit or delete files from the pool, only copy them. Now let's select the jail and start it. We may need to refresh the page after it starts. Once started, we should see the shell option. From the shell, we can install Restic. I've put some of the commands used in the video description. This command installs Restic. When prompted, press the Y key to install. Now let's add the external drive to a new pool. This will erase all data. So if you have anything important on there, please copy it somewhere safe before erasing it. To work with TrueNAS, we will format the drive to use the ZFS file system. A file system is a series of rules used for drives to store and access files. When you're ready, go to storage, disks, and look for the disk you plugged in. All of my internal drives are already connected to a pool, so I can feel pretty confident that BA0 is my external drive. If you don't see your external drive, you may need to restart your TrueNAS server. Windows and Mac OS computers allow drives to be hot swappable or plugged in while the computer is running. TrueNAS does not offer this by default, so the drive must be plugged in when the computer is turned on. Now go to Storage Pools, click Add, and create a pool. We'll name it, and move our external drive to the Data VDEVs section. We will see red text informing us that striped data can be risky. If any drive fails in a striped pool, all of that pool's data will be lost. Since we are backing up to just one drive, we are already aware of that risk, and we can choose force. Then another warning will appear further reminding us of this risk, and we can choose continue. Now we can add a data set to the pool. This is like a subfolder and can be useful when applying permissions. From Pools, we can choose the three-dot menu and click Add Dataset, and give it a name before submitting. Then we can mount our new pool to the jail. From Jails, click the arrow, and if your jail is not off, stop it first. Once off, select Mount Points, Actions, and Add. Again, from the source, we will choose the pool for our backup drive. Then we can select a destination folder and add a subfolder to the address that relates to our source. Now that the drive is prepared, let's return to the shell for the jail.
let's change directory into the external drive's mounting point. And run this command to initialize a rustic repository. I am not concerned with encrypting this backup, so I will use the insecure no password flag. This command must come at the end of almost any command relating to this repository, or it will ask for a password that doesn't exist. Encryption might be preferred by some people. If so, you can ignore this and provide a password, though this may make recovering your files more challenging if you ever do lose this password. With the RESTIC repository ready, we can run the backup command. Here we see the destination comes first and then the source. Depending on how many files you back up, this might take some time. Each backup creates a snapshot or image in time of the backed up folder. So if I delete a file, it may still be available in a previous snapshot. The same goes if I move files between folders. To see more information about available snapshots, we can use this command. And we can see what's inside of a snapshot with another similar command. Look at that. Together, we have set up a rustic backup from a true NAS jail. Please let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video. Have a great day and thank you for attending Class Outside.